Hey there, Miss Smith here, and today we are going to learn about graffiti. We're going to do a unit on graffiti. So you might think it's a pretty far jump. Um, if you think back for a couple weeks ago, we did a unit on public art. Uh, then we just finished up architecture. But if you think about it, they all kind of go along together. So we talked about public art being art that is on the side of buildings and it's incorporated into the city and town structure, such as the art on Main Street in Savannah. Then we talked about the architecture, so the different components of buildings that make it an actual visual style of art. And now we're going to talk about graffiti. So this is artwork that is on the architecture of most buildings. I do want to mention there is a difference between graffiti and public art. Public art, if you remember back to that video, is artwork that is made for the public. So Usually the government or special donors will pay for that artwork to be made. The public has some kind of um, input into that artwork and even sometimes helps make that artwork. And so it's something that is legal, public art. Graffiti, on the other hand, is not legal. So it's an illegal art form, but it's a whole style of art on its own. So I wanted to talk about that. If you look back in this uh, picture here, maybe you'll notice a few of these characters back here. Maybe they look a little familiar to you. Um, I noticed some of these uh, Sesame Street characters in here. So moving on, what is graffiti? Graffiti actually comes from the Italian language. It's derived from the word graffio, which means to scratch. So originally, graffiti was writing and drawings on walls or scratches inside the walls that range from a simple, simple written words to elaborate wall paintings, which we know of today. And we'll look at a few examples of the older style of graffiti, because obviously they did not have spray paint way back in the day. So a brief history on graffiti, we're not going to get very detailed on this. The first drawing on walls, basically you could say graffiti goes back to thousands of years ago to the cave art times, if you remember that. Uh, if you look at this picture down here at the bottom left, this is inside a cave and these are handprints of cave people. So obviously they didn't have spray paint, so they would uh, chew up berries and other different kinds of materials that would give them some kind of pigment. And then they would use that to print their hand on the wall. So their version of spray paint. They could also take that uh, berries, chew it around in their mouth, and they could take a reed. A reed is a natural plant that usually grows along waterways, and it's kind of like a straw where it has a hollow inside. So they would crush up berries in their mouth. They would spit them through the weed reed like a straw, and then they would put their hand on the wall, and so they were blowing paint or pigment out onto the wall. Uh, ancient Romans also carved graffiti into walls. So this is actually an ancient Roman uh, style of graffiti where this is etched inside a wall. And you can kind of see, make out, it's kind of like a horse head figure here. So basically it's illegal or, you know, not supposed to be there. But people, that's their form of showing their self-expression. Um, honestly, if you remember back to cave art days, cave art people couldn't speak. They didn't have a written language. So uh, their handprints are kind of like, hey, uh, Steve was here kind of a thing. Moving on, we're going to talk about more of the modern style of graffiti. So if you look at these pictures down here, like this style, what we know of today is modern graffiti. Modern graffiti first started in the 1960s. It first appeared in Philadelphia and then moved on to New York, especially in the subway system. Graffiti evolved alongside hip-hop music, so it kind of was influenced about what was going on in music and also what was going on in culture at that time. And unrelated to hip-hop graffiti, gangs at that time in the 1960s and 70s used graffiti to basically mark their territory as a way of saying who belonged on what side of the street or area of the town. Uh, the one thing you'll notice is graffiti tags, which is probably the most common form of graffiti. So you can see two different tags down here. So obviously people did not want to sign their name on a wall. You're not going to say like, Steve was here, uh, especially with your last name, because then you're doing an illegal form of art, the police could easily find you and then send you to jail or give you a fine for doing graffiti on illegal 
uh, premise. So a lot of artists that do graffiti come up with a tag name. So this is basically like a nickname or a name they go by as an artist to basically signify that they were there and that's their art. Um, tag names have different kinds of fonts. You'll notice a lot of the letters kind of overlap. There's also a shadow effect on most of these. Um, you can see this one, this has a black shadow. This one has kind of like a layered shadow effect to kind of show a three dimension to these different types of graffiti. Um, usually all graffiti is very brightly colored as well. So moving on, uses of graffiti. So why do people make graffiti on walls or other illegal areas of buildings? Well, there's tons of different reasons. Um, it could be political or anti-government. So you have to think outside the United States, yes, we have graffiti here, but there's actually graffiti all over the world. So whether um, it's someone upset about some kind of political argument that's going on, rebelling against the government and what's going on, um, not everybody has a democratic society like we do. Um, Anti-war. So I'm not just talking about World War One, World War Two. There are wars in between countries all the time, especially third world countries. Personal expressions is a means of communication. Some people feel like their vote, their voice, does not matter. And so they want to get out their opinions and what their thought is on a different subject matter. So it's a way for them to communicate. Rebellion against authority, whether that is political, um, it could be police related, um, it could be many different things. A lot of people when they rebel like to show it in an artistic format, which is sometimes illegal like graffiti. Communication for the disadvantaged. So again, um, some people feel like their voices are not heard, especially if they live in a low income part of a town or city, they might not feel like uh, they are heard. And so this is a very easy way to boldly put their message out there. Culture identification, that kind of goes along with the hip hop society as well as um, gang related. Advertisement. So a lot of people uh, now love the graffiti style and want to make it and do it in a legal manner. So if you look at this picture up here, um, this is actually two different shipping containers that are stacked on top of each other. Um, and Adidas, a company that we all well know, um, has paid an artist to actually do the graffiti style but do it legally on shipping containers and use it as an advertisement. And then we have beautification, decorative, or high art. So uh, a lot of that comes from low-income areas. If you go to a low-income area, the buildings around there are not beautiful like the ones that I showed you in the architectural video or the Gothic art. Uh, it's a lot of factories. It's a lot of abandoned buildings. It's a lot of low-income housing. Uh, you're not going to see fountains and statues and stuff like that that we have on Main Street in Sylvania. So some people use graffiti as a way to beautify and bring life and color into their neighborhood. So I just want to introduce you to a few graffiti artists. We're just going to touch very brief, briefly on the basis of these artists. Uh, one being Keith Haring. So if you're an eighth grader, you should be familiar with Keith Haring. We've talked about him recently. So he was an artist that uh, basically worked in New York. Um, he died at a very young age of AIDS, uh, but he worked in the subways of New York. He would get off the subway train and he would basically spray paint on um, empty advertisement boards. And he did a lot of playful figures, a lot of black and white uh, kind of cartoonish designs and these faceless figures. And a lot of his art was based around um, money, poverty, basically, um, segregation, as well as AIDS, since he did die of AIDS. Um, so a lot of his had a lot of political and um, motivation behind that as well with bringing up AIDS, especially in the 1980s when the AIDS, the AIDS epidemic was going on. Um, if you are a sixth grader, you should know Jean-Michel. Uh, we did a project on him. Jean-Michel also did a lot of uh, brightly colored graffiti art like these two pieces here. Again, he was a disadvantaged um, artist. He lived in a low income part of town um, and he suffered from a lot of segregation, race, um, and poverty. So he showed that in a lot of his art as well. Uh, Banksy, if you know Banksy, 
or have heard of Banksy before. He goes by the name Banksy. We actually don't know his real name. Um, again, because if his name got out, they would probably arrest him. Um, he is based in London, but he actually has graffiti pieces all around the world. He's probably one of the most famous graffiti artists, um, just because he is very edgy in his graffiti style. Um, he also does a lot of very fun satire pieces. Um, this is probably his most famous piece. It's a girl with the red balloon. Um, this piece down here is another kind of funny piece. Uh, these are two characters from Pulp Fiction. Normally they would have guns in their hands. It's from a movie, but he puts bananas in their hands. Um, very fun kind of, um, stencil like. He uses a lot of stencils in his spray painting techniques. Stencils, once you make them, you can basically take that stencil around the town at night. Um, all these graffiti artists work at night as well, so they're not caught by the cops. And then when you can take that stencil and reuse it as many times as possible, and then you can just use a stencil and spray paint through it. Um, Shepard Fairey, this is his actual real name, and this is actually what he looks like. He is an American artist. Um, he's probably pretty well known for some of his political um, campaigns that he did. So he did when Obama ran for office, he did this big campaign for Obama. So that is a very well known art piece of his. Um, he started off his campaign um, with this Obey stencil. This is Andre the Giant. Um, and he made a bunch of these stencils and put them all around the United States. And then uh, probably in his most recent work are these kind of collection of posters that show um, different parts of people that live in America. So, you know, Native Americans from African American to Islam to Hispanic. Um, so he kind of shows the different faces of women, especially minorities, that live in the United States. I think they actually turned these into stamps as well. And then one more artist I want to touch base on is his name is Invader. That's what he goes by, Invader. And why he is kind of different is that his graffiti is not spray paint. It's actually these mosaic glass tiles. So these are tiles that uh, he then takes and puts them onto different parts of buildings. Um, again, he works at night, but what's great about these little mosaic pieces is they're really small and he can pre-make them at his house or factory wherever he works. And then um, they are kind of like on a, a mesh piece of paper. And then he can just basically slap these up here with a little bit of mortar or uh, kind of like concrete and then they are stuck there basically forever. Um, and if you notice his artwork is very pixelated so he's very inspired by uh, 80s kind of Atari old school game style um, and if you did the make 8-bit art for one of your uh, projects uh, at the beginning of this online schooling this should look very familiar. So it's almost like pixelated art he does. Um, he does characters that are commonly seen so like ninja turtles um this is from pac-man you can actually see him up here he does do larger pieces again at night he's on top of a roof his face is covered um and he does go by the name invader uh he is currently uh still working he is a french artist but he does travel around the world um a lot of his pieces just like banksy and a lot of these other famous artists they usually get defaced or stolen um, and they are worth a lot of money if you actually get one of these pieces. Um, but not a lot is known on him since he's pretty incognito like Banksy. And then moving on, I'm going to um, post just a short little four minute video. I believe it's a TED talk that just talks about graffiti, whether we should classify it as art or if it's vandalism. So I'll put that in a link under the classwork so you can watch that. 